No, I'm trying to do most of this in vent, but I need to figure out how many of us can't hear and determine if I can do most of this in vent and speed up the process here or if I need to actually type it up. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, if I'm here, everybody's got to be here. I think he has himself confused with me. I'm the main event, remember? Yeah, it's 1 a.m. Alright, well, thank you all for getting here, first of all. Um, I would like to apologize for a little bit shorter than usual notice. Um, we've done an alliance change, for those who haven't heard, and that's the main reason we're here today, to let people know kind of the what happened, why, and information on Destination Alliance and what will change, if anything, which is probably very little, actually. But uh, we'll give you the skinny on all that. Um, we know there are people here who totally applaud our move. There are people here who may oppose it. There may be some people in the middle. Um, I will do what I can to continue to create a happy home for all. Uh, I probably can't please every single individual, but we'll do our best to do what we can. Um, and so with that, I'll kind of get into what was happening and what led to a move. All right, um, as a GM, I went to an alliance meeting with uh, the regulators, guild masters, and alliance leaders, primarily Merrily. Um, that was about a week ago-ish. The meeting itself went pretty well, better than I was expecting, actually. Um, one of their main concerns about life in-game and things is the amount of cross-realm information them seems to manage to make it to other realms. Um, and as I sat in this meeting, I kind of noticed that there was a lot of effort going towards kind of the complaining and griping about it, and yet there wasn't much discussion of how to prevent it or, you know, looking at any steps that could be done to prevent those things to begin with so that people wouldn't be less frustrated on the tail end. As I started suggesting some prevention tips, I was a little bit dismayed at it seemed like my ideas were things that no one had even thought of before. That was kind of my gut feeling. Now most of the guilds and guild leaders in the Regulators Alliance are not people we've had a problem with. I haven't had any issues with Merrily. I haven't had issues with most of the people in the Alliance. I haven't had issues with some of the policies and procedures expected of Guild Masters in that Alliance. For the most part, we've been good. And thus far, the last few months, things have been not, not terrible, not great. Uh, 
any population of over a thousand people, you know, there's always going to be people who've got left wing and right wing opinions on that kind of thing, and no one's going to be, or the entire population is never going to be perfectly happy about everything all at once. That's just kind of, kind of part of life. That said, an alliance that's fairly active and holds. Twenty guilds. Uh, there's going to be one for whatever freaking reason that we as a guild, to put to put it frankly, have a problem with. And in the case of the regular Slayers Alliance, that became the Chill Sound folks um, for a number of reasons. Some of the history there, there I've already posted on the on the uh, Facebook page for the guild for people to read. Uh, I was suggesting in this alliance meeting that we not have guilds setting their invite rent rights so low that just basically anybody who joins the guild can invite others. Allowing some time, even if it was 24, 48 hours, 7 days, whatever it needed to be, some short amount of time where the individual joining the guild would have an opportunity to understand and hear what the expectations are at the guild level, what the alliance rules and policies are, etc., etc., before they get promoted up to a rank where they can invite themselves and invite others and know what's expected. As a guild master, if I got anybody coming to me about any of our people and I got to go have a little talky talk with somebody, which hasn't happened very often, I can't really go and politely scold somebody for something, knowing that their response is going to be, what are you talking about Willis? What rules? What alliance forum? What site? What are the, uh, what were the, you know, I'm being told I'm broken a rule that I didn't know existed, etc., etc. Um, so, I haven't really done a lot of that, and of course, there hasn't been a lot of need anyway, but there's been a few instances that have come up, and I got an alliance leader tapping me on the shoulder, and of course, I got to keep that heat off me, right? So anyway, the big stink of the week seems to be that when the Alliance runs RVR as an Alliance and keeps the BG they're using for that private, there's a lot less cross-rounding information going on and a lot less obvious use of radar knowing where we are. However, people like Solik will, will also say that when they open up the BG to be public for all Hibs to come out and participate, he's usually doing so because at the Alliance only level, there's not enough numbers showing up. That point, I understand. I get that. That, however, does not mean that the only way to RVR is to run 40 plus or don't show up at all. There are plenty of people who are capable of running eight mans. There are plenty of guilds like ourselves who are perfectly capable of showing up with two or three groups as needed and doing our own thing and not even following the actual BG that may or may, may or may not be out there at the time. In response to this meeting, I was hearing some things that Pino in general had been lacking in participation. So I purposefully had a night uh, nearly right after the, the meeting, where I kind of suggested to people individually in our guild that they go out and join the BG and grab whatever uh, pickup group they can and mingle in and, and do all that, you know, participatory stuff. And what happened was people could barely buy a group. So that kind of created the issue of, well, don't bitch of us for not being in there. If, when we do show up, we can't even get invites. Right? And also those invites, I don't believe that the BG leader out there, whether that's Solik or Bellis or whoever, should have to micromanage people getting groups. Sometimes they do that. They actually go out of their way to look at who's ungrouped. And they post the whole list of the names that are ungrouped in the mail chat and try to build the groups. And to me, that's kind of hand-holding. I mean, if you want to go out there in RVR, run BG groups, look at the list, and get a group. You know, it's usually not that hard. Um, 
So that said, I appreciate when the BG leaders are willing to kind of go a step further and help people get grouped. I don't think that's their responsibility. But if that helps Hibs overall, then cool, right? Anyway, it kind of came to my attention that in this event, right when it was happening, people were, you know, our people were having trouble getting groups at all unless we build our own. And on top of that, in the event channel at the alliance level, other people are, you know, bitching, moaning, gossiping about how Pino never shows up and Pino doesn't contribute, blah, blah, blah. And so I guess that would be the first moment of, of hostility for me is that, hey, if you want to flame a couple of individual names for whatever that you think they're doing wrong, then flame those individual names. Don't attack my whole freaking guild for it, especially if my guild is three times the size of yours and puts up three times as many run points as yours in a third of the time, you know? Now, who, for, for those of you who have not been here since day one, I gotta tell you, this guild name has only been around since February. That's of this year. And I did comment on the Facebook page about this too. With the exception of the first six weeks that we formed the guild and decided to do any major inviting and, and actually run a real gun out of it, this, this guild had posted 10 million round points or more per month. And we're almost at 70 now. That would be that would be seventy million, and so to me that doesn't say, oh, Pino's not online. Pino doesn't participate. Pino's on their halves or mids. That tells me we've been here. A lot of those round points we've gone good done on our own, without a BG, without latching onto Solik or whoever else. You know, we've kind of stepped up and run our own show. And as a guild, maybe we haven't needed to be with the BG so much. But that doesn't mean that we don't participate. Um, in the last couple of weeks here, or maybe I'll say five or six weeks or so, I actually started scheduling specific nights where we would run an RBI as a guild, and I also scheduled specific nights where we would go ahead and attach to the BG and you know support the Alliance and all that good stuff. And apparently none of this is being observed by the collective over in the regulators. Uh, so out a couple of days ago, we are pretty much done at that point with them. Uh, and we had all this conversation post, uh, you know, post alliance meeting on the regulators forum as well. And you know me, I got a sense of humor at some point. I had to make a comment about how it was funny that the alliance is named regulators and they ain't doing very much regulating. So true. Aye, aye. <laughs> I hate to be someone who wants to start a war proverbially or otherwise with an entire alliance. Uh, but as I said on the Facebook page, our primary complaint was Shillstown. And their leadership and their lack of their own leadership monitoring their own people. And the fact that rank nines over there can invite, which means anybody on alb or mid can just roll a hib, get their ass into Chillstown, and therefore have all the access to our information, our alliance vent, our alliance chats, and know exactly where our zerg is. And next thing you know, mids and or alves are using bomb groups to radar us, right? Three. So I kind of took that one guild and I made it an alliance problem. I said, if any guild has no entrance of standards, then this alliance has no entrance of standards. And so you're creating 
what you're bitching about in terms of the cross roaming and getting your Zerg wiped repeatedly time and time again. And then I followed it with this. I said, you know, if anything, maybe Pina was smart to run her own RVR so that we were not victimized like y'all were. Read Babble. So I just kind of got to the point where, you know, uh, that alliance or any alliance really is about as strong as its weakest freaking link. It's no different than an eight man, you know, with uh, seven fifties and a little level three PLB running around. You know, if the seven fifties have to constantly be resing this little lobby, then it hinders the groups, you know, for progress. That's happening at the alliance level. Um, personally. I think I've said enough about that issue to where at least Merrily's attention will get on it and there will create enough stir within the rest of that alliance where they'll all start seeing it that way and go, hey, Merrily, we have a problem here, you know? And apparently Pino saw it and they decided that since they couldn't fix it, they just split. And they're big enough and, and you know, large enough and whatever to go do their own damn thing anyway. Um, at the moment, I don't believe... Uh, Regulators folks have any idea what our plans were going to be. And quite frankly, I wasn't even sure what my plans were going to be out the gate. And uh, I kind of treated the uh, relationship, if you want to call it that, like it would in a relationship in real life. Close business on one before I start another, you know. Um, and so when it comes to, to the point where are we ready to hit that button that says leave the alliance, I don't do that until I'm perfectly comfortable just standing alone and not being allied anywhere. And we've done that too. And we did that again for another day or two. And it didn't take long for us to go ahead and get a hold of people with the uh, Sarah, Sarah Wooden's Pride Alliance folks and get a hold of uh, more with their GM and Alliance League. Now, I'd like to let you know, first of all, that as a guild leader, I would normally have held a meeting first before I committed to any decision on either leaving an old alliance for whatever reasons and or joining a new destination alliance for whatever reasons. Normally, I would do that. In this case, it became eminently clear that severing the old alliance had to happen sooner than later. So we just went ahead and did it. Uh, and there's already a whirlwind of storm and, and, and clusterfuck information going on right now between you know some of the people who want to carry on gossip between members of the old alliance, the regulators website, and people jumping around on this and that. And what really put closure on leaving the old alliance and whether or not well, that was uh, the right move was I couldn't I couldn't even believe this when I saw it. John, my partner in crime here, uh, had just happened to go on to the reg site yesterday, and of all people, Bard the Catch, who's the Chilltown GM or one of them anyway, has started posting some pretty flaming information about all of us in Pino on the regulator's site. And it was kind of funny because, you know, as I'm reading it, you know, Kiki's here in the house. I got clicker here. And here I am sitting in the living room with the computer. And I'm I just the little, bar, little part that John had read or put on Facebook to let us know Bar the Catch was apparently running her mouth. So I go check it out. And as I'm reading, it was pretty funny in the house here because I just kind of went back into my old Marine mode. It was pretty loud. I was like, you got to be shitting me, pile. And they all heard me and came out running. That was funny. So I started typing my reply, and that reply was 
suddenly no longer able to even post on the right web site. They had already removed my privileges there. So I just thought it was typical that they want to drop a verbal bomb and then not even allow a cat an opportunity to retort at all. So there's that, that prompted post one that I added to the Facebook page. And then there's a second long one that I followed up and it got sent directly to Merrily and I copied and pasted it for all of you. And it's kind of the longer winded version of the same, but they're both on the Facebook page. So by the time that gets all read, I won't read it here, but uh, by the time that's all seen by everybody, at least the part about the clarity of leaving that alliance and, and that issue which should be pretty clear to people. Now as far as Pino moving forward with a new alliance and the options there, I'll run that by you and how we landed where we're at. All right, the fact of the matter is, first of all, and I, tr I try to maintain some humbleness about this. I'm a pretty humble cat, oddly enough. Uh, sometimes I may not cross as much. I may not come across as, as so. But I look at this guild in its short time in existence and the number of people, the, mon the, 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 you know, the population count, the percentage of the population that's actually active, the realm point uh, you know, mark we're at for being here less than a year it's pretty, looks pretty good to me. Um, couldn't have asked for any better. Didn't expect what we got, to be honest with you. And that's credit to you all. That's not a. There's no single one hand involved in that effort. You know that that's all of us working together and doing what we should be doing, right? <clears throat> I started it. You did. I will actually add that Miss Zoe here. Uh was very big on getting our population up to begin with. Uh, pretty slick with her recruiting. And not just, you know, it's one thing to be a great salesman and a recruiter, but it's another thing to really understand who it is we're looking for. And so I kind of feel that as many people as she may have invited, that she also did some conscious not inviting certain folks as well. And I got to say to that end that we've had very little drama here, very little problems. Uh, you know, quite surprising to me, to be honest with you, uh, but all good stuff. I do it for the good of the guild. Um, for several months now, we've had pretty much open invitations to any other alliance we wanted to join over time. Most of those contacts were not even initiated by us in Pino. There were other people observing whatever their perspective allowed them to preserve, to preserve or observe rather, and uh, kind of sending us verbal invitations. One of those alliances is the one we're in right now, which is the Severance Fry folks. And while I try not to get too uh, stereotypically or you know stereotypically labeling of people, I would say that the current alliance when it's been active is probably a little bit more RVR focused than the one we just left. Yeah. I don't have a complete listing of all of the guilds in this alliance, but I'm going to tell you what's kind of happening with this alliance and part of why we're in it. Yeah. Uh, Severin's Pride would be considered the lead guild here, although there are other guilds here who may even be bigger. Uh, I believe Mortavan is the primary alliance lead person. He does it all in game, rather than worrying about a you know uh, like a regs website per se, and that's all fine. Um, I happen to know some of them already from my own past in the game. Uh, way back on the old Hib K server was a guild called Resurrection, which at one point got pretty freaking huge. Uh, and over time, as that guild kind of 
had its own activity issues and whatnot, they were all absorbed into Sheridan's Pride also. Um, some of you know Ferret, F-A-R-A-T. I believe he's a Realm 12 Warden. Uh, he is the most recent Guildmaster of the old uh, Resurrection Guild, and he's now in Sheridan's Pride as an officer also. With that said, I ran him for six years, ran ran Al Plasic for about a few months, went to mid for about four years, came back to Hib, oh, maybe a year and a half ago, and then got the Jones in to uh, start up this guild here. Um, before that happened, when I first came back, I actually logged into the tune that were still in Resurrection and saw a message the other day that said, contact people in Sheridan's Pride about joining, that that guild had been dissolved. So... I actually been in Sheridan's Preside myself for maybe about a month or two, and knowing me, it didn't take long for me to decide to get Jones in to run another guild again, uh, hence the birth of Pino. At any rate, we were thinking about, do we start our own new alliance, which we probably could do, and could probably invite some folks to it from all over the place, uh, not excluding some of the guilds that are in the regs right now. Um, I also know some folks in a, I'm going to call this kind of a circle of people, if you will, um, who run with a guild on mid called Circle of Honor, and they have a HIB equivalent Circle of Dishonor. We have guild members here in Pino who are familiar with all those folks and have tunes in those guilds too. Um, and I thought about that possibility of they have kind of an inactive-ish alliance, but if we showed up there and breathe some life into it, maybe some of those mid players would have more reason to get their hips on and do something over here. Um, and I knew we had some ties into with the Sarah Pride folks also. Um, Sarah Pride Alliance, the current one we're in now, is also fairly inactive at the moment. A large part of this, according to Morph, is the release of, I guess, the recent version of Neverwinter Nights. A lot of people have poured their souls into that game and kind of left Camelot altogether. Again. Again. I have a feeling they will do that for a while, and they'll all be back. Again. Again. At any rate, what Pino has agreed to do, per se, is to not only be here and be happy to be here and make sure that, we're like, uh, just similar to the old rules of the old lines that we keep this current alliance chat, you know, respectful, like and usual, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, as far as alliance use rules, I won't change anything than what we're already used to uh, until further notice. Uh, Pretty sure he just disconnected. I was gonna say it shows that he's talking, but I don't hear anything. Yeah, well, he's not in game anymore. Is he? He's been going Link Dead a lot lately. Yeah, click and one offline too.
Sorry, we had some technical issues. Um, we're coming back in in a second. This is uh, Clicka and Sith. Sorry, I'm um, on Kiki's computer, so hence her name. We'll be back in. Give us AFK five minutes. Everyone get coffee, bio, etc. Be back on. Thank you for the update. Uh, yes, ma'am. She's been hiding something from us this whole time. Okay, nobody is to say anything about the Kiki thing. I'm not supposed to touch her computer. Please, thank you. <laughs> P.S. Click it because everybody damn flat. Not say nothing. Oh, I'm telling. Holding you to that, 10 plus. Just let me reactivate my account. It's going to be about two weeks. Seriously. I'm... My Clickatune is actually on one assist account. So, I reactivate two weeks. Y'all get paid. Not playing. Sith kick my ass if I don't. Ask him. I don't care. I'm telling Kiki. Well, I'm going to take a quick AFK before they get back. Okay. Why he knows the password? Yeah. He would have to promote him, but Sith could join on his own, couldn't he? He didn't know who had it, then 
thank you for letting us know, Foggy. And hopefully I'm a substantially a bit quieter than Sith and Kiki are. No, he managed to use the other computer from somewhere else. Is he a leader yet? Indeed. Well done. You guys just should be glad I'm still awake. It's quarter to two here. Oh, wow. You got PT in the morning? No, wife's taking the kids so I get to sleep in. It's better bet it over and take it for Ghost was the one whose wife was going to beat him if he didn't get to dinner. Let me. No, Good for I'm... Kurt. Just took forever to figure out what the hell we're going to have for dinner. Alright, so, um. Are we most of us back yet? Or... I'm back. Welcome back. Thanks. You were missed. Anyway, I didn't want to drum on too much on that. I just want to let people know what happened. Uh, um, I don't like not having a meeting first and making any decisions and trying to keep it more de democratic, but uh, every now and then a GM just got to make a move, and uh, it was becoming imminent that that was what needed to happen with regard to regulators and getting us out of that Chillstown mess and all that. Um, so the details on that com the conversation I sent to Merrily are on the Facebook page. And again, right after this chat here, I'll, uh, whoever's not already on the Facebook page who wants to be, I'll get that going. Um, as far as this alliance goes that we're in now, it was once nearly the size as regulators. Not very active and a much higher average realm rank and realm point alliance um, certainly Sherwin's pride still fits that description and they can go out eight man without doing any BG's um, this alliance doesn't even typically run BG's per se most of the guilds are capable when they're active to just run their own eight mans around and do their own thing um, that does not mean however that we won't at, from time to time have some reasons to want to huddle up and get more than eight of us showing up at one spot, whether it's to go take a relic or defense or whatever it may be. So that said, uh, it's already been discussed with their alliance leadership that our buddy John here is going to step up and become the known name for BG level leading as far as RBR go, goes within this alliance. Um, that said, like the older problems with the older lines, we're going to try to do it a little different and lock it down a little bit better so that we don't have that cross roaming information going back and forth. You know, try to limit that as much as possible. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be an RBRBG up every single night and such, you know. Uh, of course, a lot of that's on John and his schedule and what he feels like doing. And there are other, other members here we have in Pino that can do the same if they want to step up and do that. Um, I can do it myself, but I gotta tell you, I got a mental flaw. When I'm actually RBRing, I get a lot more damage out from my caster tunes if I shut up. 
And if I start rocking ours, I end up not being all that useful for my tune. <laughs> that's just a mental quirk I have, I suppose. Uh, and that's one of the reasons uh, we, we tend to let John do a lot of those things. And, of course, he's pretty good at it and doesn't mind doing it, so we appreciate that. Yeah, John's um, really good at multitasking. Yeah. Like the Sorry, I had to do it. I never see the bar. Nor There's nor some nor. things I can multitask with pretty well, but that just ain't one of them. I don't know why. I just got to know my limitations and roll with it. Anyway, I'd like to let people know that as far as the new alliance goes, it's kind of where I'm shifting to at this point. Um, most of the guilds, are guilds here are pretty small. Some are larger, but relatively inactive. Uh, as members of Pino joining this alliance, we will be the larger active guild here for a while. As far as a current list of all the guilds who are here, Morv has already kind of talked to us and said a lot of that is going to be irrelevant because a lot of these guilds are going to get dumped for inactivity and it's going to be in a rebuilding process anyway. So in the future, next few weeks, there will be other guilds joining this alliance. I don't know how many of them will come from regulators, if any, uh, but that's a possibility. Uh, it probably won't be Chilltown, of course. I will probably push that agenda. <laughs> um, but we're happy to be here, and I hope you all are happy to be here as far as the Alliance level stuff goes, and we'll continue on with us in Pino. Um, I know some people had some reservations about this particular Alliance, or maybe some of its own members in it. Um, all I can really say to that is there's always that one cat you got a problem with no matter where you go. And I just hope that we can kind of focus on the collective good and, and doing what we can and, and kind of steer clear of those individuals we, we may have had a pickups with in the past or whatever it is. Um, if that's not possible and people need to go their merry way because of it, you know, then I guess I, that's kind of out of my control. I hope we can work around that stuff and figure out a way for, you know, Remembering what we can't pay our game fee for is entertainment and happiness and all that good stuff. So that's always a somewhere factored into our goals around here. Over the next 30 days or so, I'd also take some, well, I shouldn't say maybe even put a day limit on it, but in general, if anybody's got ideas on potentially what other guilds we may want to recommend to bring into this alliance um, I would say email me with those suggestions uh, keep in mind they've got to show some level of activity um, and I know that seems to be a realm wide problem lately I don't know if everybody just went to Alba or mid to play or what but um, you know if everybody goes to mid then they don't have any enemy to fight and if everybody goes to Alba they don't have any enemy to fight either so <laughs> uh, Someone's got to be in here on here. Might as well be us, right? Here, here. And own it. I say you. Yeah, you ain't gonna get too many <laughs> run points if there ain't no enemy to fight. You know. Um, questions, answers about all of that wonderful good stuff. Anybody? After I come back from the store. Well, normally I try to do some kind of activity after a kill me. I gotta tell you, my own life is a got some distractions and I was lucky to pull away just to be here where I said I'd be and, and, and have a little chit chat with you for a little bit so I may not be on much after this uh, meeting um, out of all of you uh, I would maybe recommend the demographic idea and see if y'all want to help them do something and, and make it happen um, I am proud of the fact that not any one name has to be present for a guild activity to be present um, 
we prefer it that way. Ideally, you know, we'll be promoting up some more officers and get to the point where if any one or two faces are out for whatever reason, uh, the guild as a whole doesn't really notice to skip, skip a beat too much. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking for as far as a guild direction. But I also want to tie in that we're going to help this alliance build itself. And my joke for the day, getting back to leaving an old alliance and moving into this one, I ran some numbers. Um, and, you know, if you do the basic math, you figure if 20 guilds can join an alliance, then one guild is 5% of the alliance. We already know we are way more than 5% of the regulator's population. As it turns out, I could give you some basic numbers to compare. Uh, if you looked at former numbers of being approximately 730 to maybe 270, if you think of those two numbers, and you take 145 from that 730 figure, and you move it and add it to the 250 or so, that's essentially what Pino has done with dropping the population and regulators and adding the population to the Severed and Sprite Alliance. So people are going to notice a dent in activity over there. My joke of the day is who wants to come help me empty my bag? Disgusting. Yeah, I don't know who asked, because um, it was a while back, but we don't really have requirements. Yeah, attempt for RBR would help a ton. Not necessary, though. As long as you know your tune, we can work with it. However, you must listen to the leaders. Do not overextend because your healers, <coughs> me, will flip the fuck out. And vent is an absolute must, so you can at least hear the, com the commands and stuff being called out. I'd like to add to that, I don't really set hard requirements as far as bringing your tune to RVR. The more people we got, the better. But I gotta say this. That said, we would prefer, I won't say recommended or required, but I would say we would prefer for your tune to be 50, to have the ML10 and the CL10 uh, all done so that you gain all the hit points from being the CL10. That will help if you're squishy. Um, and of course that helps the guild level either group or set of groups that we have out there, you know, do what it's going to do. Um, other than that, I don't get too many, too into, uh, you know, group builds class wise or everything. You have the usual survival necessities, you know. Uh, I'd like to see groups go out with one bard, one druid, and one regrowth warden, where the regrowth warden will now sub as a second druid and primarily be support, but will also give the haste that has boom, move, been moved into the regrowth line now to whatever melee tanks we have, even if that melee tank is only John on his tune, and uh, you know we get some casters out there depending on what we're doing. And keep in mind, a lot of this is situational. What's going on with the uh, the realm in general? and you know how we want to tackle it there will be times we'll build all castle groups and go farm towers and and get out to laugh at us about it after they die there will be times we'll start building up more uh heavy melee groups that may only have one caster for a few extra stuns to help the bot out you know and try to do a little more smash mouth um and that will replicate into pve events as well there's some pv things where as you know Many, many cast casters are great. And there are also times where melee tunes are great. I'd love to run through uh, Fulmer City sometime. Not necessarily to go kill the Hydra, but, you know, people that got... If I had, like, eight... A group of eight, like, level 45 tanks, and maybe, maybe it was, uh, you know, seven tanks and a bard, that's just fun in there to go beat on stuff and, you know, do the melee bit, so... Um, 
it's really mission oriented in terms of what you get up to get to do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who just said what about one druid in a group? I'm good, but holy shit. That was me. Let me clarify that again. I was suggesting we've typically gone bar druid druid. And that works alright. And if people want to do that, that's okay. But I don't I don't have a problem. If the main druid is pretty solid, we'll count Zoe in there. Uh that the second druid would become a regrowth warden, which will primarily heal and run kind of like a druid, but will also provide the melee haste for the tanks within our group. Oh, got you. Okay, yeah, I missed that part. I was scared. I thought you meant one healer per group, and that's why I said I'm good, but holy shit, I at least need some backup heals. No, no, I'm just looking at, you know, you guys all want to go smash some mids. You already know that mids are heavy melee train assist, so we've got to do what little we yeah. can to even try to keep up with that. We're not going to be as strong as trolls. We know that. But uh, having that world and what that melee haste, uh, and if we got a couple black blade masters or whatever it is in our group, uh, I know people are leveling up champions and temping them up lately, that that would help. So, you know, otherwise we find ourselves smashing on albs instead. Because over there it's Dark Age of Castellot, and they're not playing as much melee, you know? Yeah, and that actually works because if you remember when Kiki couldn't run with us or we just couldn't find a second druid, Mativ would back up heal for me, and like Tarek just said, he would also keep bodyguard and guard on me, so me and him were sitting over there healing, and we did fantastic. I gotta add something, I don't know if you all are aware of this, it's pretty funny. Um, you know, I don't cross around myself. I don't really log into other rooms for any reason directly. But there are, that doesn't mean that information doesn't find its way to me here and there. And uh, for some of you who, who haven't been all that active in the last maybe, you know, 60 days or so, we had been doing a lot of tower farms. And I'm talking like three, four animus, maybe a bane and a support, just sitting in towers. And mostly this was happening in Al. Most of the people we killed doing this were Alves. There was t a few times where both Smackish and Renquist were running together and came into them and we, we wiped all them off too. And they were kind of surprised by it. And the word now on um, the whole Albion life of things in this game is that if you see a Hib Tower, treb it down. But don't go into it under any circumstances. So I like to say congrats to Pino for... Uh, Creating that out there. That's why you go directly badass. to the roof. Let them take the tower back and then farm it out of their tower. Yeah, that's the other thing. What we, what we were doing for a while is actually getting the tower, not necessarily claim it, trying not to kill the lords, only staying on second level, setting up all the traps and shrooms on level two. And then as soon as the albs pour in, then we'd send up somebody and go kill the Lord, which would lock that door so they couldn't run out. Man, they were getting pissed. It was pretty funny. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. And But then you eventually have to move to the roof, let them come in, kill the level one tower captain by accident, and... Thing. You can farm out of that thing all day long. Right. And we had done so much of that in the last three months that what I'm saying is now Albs see a green tower, if it is happen to be green, they, they won't even mess with it. They might send a sewer slider or a necromancer in, in to see if it's actually us, or, or, or Hib anyway, farming or not. If they see that it's mids, they'll go ahead and try, try to jack it. But if it's... <laughs> If they find any of us in there, you won't even see the rest of them come in. The one guy will suicide die to get the intel, and the rest will bounce. It's kind of funny. All right, anyway, uh, as I mentioned, this building, this guild meeting tonight was kind of a let you know about Alliance events things. It's not the traditional, uh, you know, setup we normally do for guild meetings. There will, however, be one of those fairly soon, uh, like maybe in a week ish. Um, I got to make sure my own life schedule is going to provide that time, which I think it should, but I don't have a guarantee yet. Um, 
So I'm not going to go through all the ceremonious stuff tonight. Um, some of that information still needs to get compiled and, and better prepared for a future meeting, which will probably be within a week, possibly two weeks tops. Um, anyway, uh, I hope we do okay with this new alliance. It looks to be good so far. I know we've got some quality people and some caliber guilds that are active and playing. Um, we want to contribute, add to that, and help them fill in the void where needed. Um, we were told that if we run BG level RVR, that's going to be on Pino to, to initiate and start. So that will probably be, be John doing the bulk of that. And that's already been the kind of plan and discussed. This alliance as a whole does a lot more 8-man at guild level than they do uh, you know, large-scale BGs and such. Um, but I also explained to them that that doesn't mean that a proper defense or thing doesn't, doesn't need to happen when you got 175 freaking Alps on or whatever it is. So, uh, I think reuniting some BG level stuff may help this alliance of the whole game more activity too. So, um, just by us joining here, we've pretty much added about 60% population to it of the active people, and that should be growing in the future. And most of the people I've talked to. You know, I've been around this game 12 years. Half these names I've known for a long time anyway, and I, they're, they're just not people I've had no issues with. So, you know, uh, hopefully you won't either, right? Um, I thank you all for coming. If there's any more questions, we'll all hang around for a bit, and we'll figure that out. Also, if anybody needs to get on the Facebook who isn't there, uh, mention that in the battle group chat now, and I will do those invites and get them out and get all, get all that going. Hey Sith, what about the uh, the big, you know, like Hydra and the Dragon and stuff like that? Does this alliance do those things, or will that be on Pino as well? At the moment, it's on Pino. I'm gonna say for now that's gonna be mostly on Pino. Um, that said, even since you've been kind of temporarily, uh, you know, out of sight there, Gorth, uh, this this guild has continued to grow uh, beyond my expectations, even. I think we're looking at 140 something pages now. It's pretty nuts. Uh, so a lot of those things, we certainly have the numbers of active to do. It's just a matter of scheduling and, and including the schedules of the people who actually know how to do those things and get it done. Uh, so we're not keep, keep getting wiped by that damn Hydra. <laughs> Although I did hear the secret about Hydra is a lot of Rangers. Well, I told John how to do that. He did not listen because he did ask me on Facebook. But when I do raids and stuff, or even before my break, I always open it up to the Alliance, too. So we will include the Alliance when we do that. And if they run any by themselves, cool. If not, they will be included in ours. As a general statement, though, I will say that this Alliance is a lot more RBR-focused. And I think as a guild, we are also kind of heading in that direction. Uh, that doesn't mean that PB is going to go away. In fact, to some degree, you could kind of maybe make a little bit of casting that uh, I might be the PBE GM and, and John might be the RBR GM, if you want to call it that. Uh, it doesn't mean that either of us can't do the other. But uh, certainly, we'll start doing more of those things on our own. I'm going to get a little bit more structured with uh, schedules and things like that. And then for things that appear to need numbers or where we just want to be uh, more inclusive to our alliance mates out here, then we'll go ahead and invite them up too. Uh, but most of those activities will be uh, Pino initiated for now. I will say on a quick note, <clears throat> um, since moving to this, this, uh, this alliance, it took me about all of five minutes to get a, a group versus what the regulators took me if I ever even ever got one. So me for one I'm happy with this move. Just if it gives you a little peace of mind. I uh I, I agree with it entirely. You know, my biggest issue with the last alliance is unless certain people spoke like from Pino, unless certain people spoke in Alliance, nobody got a freaking response this one, I had people talking to me last night that didn't have a freaking clue who I was but they were just talking to talk yep, yep, and then uh, I've also had issues where I'd get I'd be sitting there and, and just minding my own business with the stealth group and and you get and we get uh, rude gestures or emotes where people are like you know or saying hey fuck you 
so on and so forth and no just because of the guild we were with so I haven't had any problems with this you know I've only been on it back on the past couple days but this new this new alliance has been uh has been very uh very good to me very friendly and very uh very willing to group I agree I'm happy with the switch Sorry, Seth, I guess Dad's not going to make it tonight. <laughs> no problem. I appreciate the effort. I wish they'd, uh, you know, do what they got to do. I understand, uh, you know, relocating and all that stuff costs money and, you know, budgets and life and all that good stuff well, and uh, well, priorities and all that. So I hope they can make it back when they can make it back, you know, the sooner the better. We miss them. Yeah, true that. No, it really ain't. It really wasn't the move or anything like that. It was... Comcast, uh, they're being dicks. It, they told them it could take up anywhere up to a year to two years to get them hooked up out there, but now, but now they're telling them it might be sometime next month. It could be by the end of the year. They, they keep, they keep fucking them around basically. And <laughs> yeah, Dad's not getting too happy with Comcast. <laughs> Hey Chuck, you know what to tell your dad if he wants Comcast to move their butt. Tell him that uh, he'll report him to the FCC for unfair labor practices because they're holding up his internet and keeping him from switching to someone who could get him service quicker. They'll have somebody out there within six days. <laughs> By the way, J it's James, not Chuck, but yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Chuck Jr. is my brother, which is his son, too, so yeah. <laughs>